Now, I wasn't supposed to make a video today. I just came back from vacation and I wanted to go through my jet lag and also have a nap. However, Sony has released a couple of new firmware updates, which means the Sony FX3, the FX30, and the FX6 became that much more valuable. And also it solves a bunch of problems that people complained about. So let's get into it. Now, starting off with the Sony FX6 in version 5.0, it's actually going to add a new anamorphic de-squeeze mode in the 1.5 times. Now, when the anamorphic de-squeeze came to the FX6, it was great, except for the fact that it only offered 1.33 times and two times, which was a little bit limiting. There's a bunch of different lenses that are anamorphic that also have 1.5, and that's gonna be added into the Sony FX6, which means, well, now you can de-squeeze your footage 1.5 times. Now, I don't have the FX6 anymore, and I'm I'm sure the de-squeeze mode is only going to be on the monitor and you still have to do it in post. However, it's going to be nice that you could at least de-squeeze that footage without needing an external monitor. There's also going to be a new 3D LUT process on the Sony FX6, which borrows it from the Sony Venice. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't actually know what that means because I kind of use them both the same way. However, if it is going to borrow something from the Sony Venice in any capacity, I'm here for it. I'm not going to complain. You're also going to get enhanced functionalities out of the monitor and the control app, which is going to include things like false color and waveform. Now, this is something that that a lot of people were complaining about about the Sony FX line. You had these cinema cameras or quote unquote cinema cameras that some people would refer to and the fact that it didn't have a bunch of different features that cinema cameras should have like false color and using waveforms. Now, personally for me, I just used monitors that had those things anyways, but the fact that it's now internal to the camera, I guess technically means that a lot of people are complaining about the FX6 not being a real cinema camera. You know, y'all can shut up now. They're also gonna add a couple more lenses to the focus breathing compensation. Now that's gonna be great, especially cause the FX6 is a great handheld shooter. And also there's a ton of different Sony zoom lenses that are available and having focus breathing compensation just means that you could still use your G Master lenses that have asthma and you don't have to worry about the focus breathing too much. Now for everybody that was complaining about the FX3 or the FX30 not being a real cinema camera, all y'all shut up now, because the new firmware update does give the one thing that people complained about the most, and that's gonna be shutter angle. Gone are the days of using shutter speed all of the time and going to 1 48th of a second or 1 96 to make sure you have an accurate shutter angle. Now you're gonna be able to toggle your shutter speed or your shutter angle to give you that one feature that everybody complained about about the FX3 and the FX30. It turns out if you're disgruntled enough on the internet, you actually get what you want in a firmware update. So now we have shutter angle on the FX3 and the FX30 and we could all calm down and stop complaining. It's also kind of long overdue. I feel like they should have had shutter angle a long time ago, but honestly, I'm not that mad about it now. It's here and we could I'll stop yelling about it. You also have the ability to add clip flags for shot marking. Now, this is actually gonna be really nice because sometimes when you're doing something like an event, in fact, I shot my cousin's basketball tournament while I was in Ghana, and I actually have a ton of different clips that I don't think I'm actually gonna use all of those inside of a final project. Using things like clip markings and using flags makes it a lot easier because you could actually have your good takes on there, which makes the process of culling your clips a little bit easier. Now, if you're someone that's a wedding shooter or you shoot sports, this is gonna come in handy. It's gonna make your edits a lot faster and also you don't have to go back and try to delete clips and accidentally delete ones that you really need because deleting a kiss at a wedding is always very annoying. And lastly is gonna be some live streaming upgrades to the FX3 and the Sony FX30. Now, the FX30 was a perfect live streaming camera for myself. And on one shoot, I actually kind of got screwed because the FX3 doesn't have the exact same live stream workflow. But if they are gonna enhance that application, I think it's something that's gonna be welcome, especially for you guys that are getting into doing a lot more lives on your phones or on your computer. Now, personally for me, I didn't really care about some of these upgrades. In fact, when using shutter angle, I'd shoot 180 degree shutter anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but they are incredibly welcome and I'm definitely going to use them, especially with the varying frame rates that are gonna be on the FX3 and the FX30. Now, the FX6 is also great because it's slowly still getting features even though that camera is almost four years old, which means on one end, there might not be an FX6 Mark II anytime soon, or, there's gonna be a new one coming up and it's gonna have all those upgrades already built in. Now, this is gonna be really hype for a lot of people that are using some of these FX line cameras, including myself that just got the Sony FX3. Now, one thing that you're gonna to have to keep in mind is that all of these things are going to be available in May 2024 and September 2024, respectively. Now, Sony might change their minds and they might come out with something a little bit sooner, but you are gonna have to wait a little bit in order to get those upgrades. But that also means we might get some foresight into the future, as in we might not get new versions of these cameras this year. We've all made wish lists about the Sony FX3 Mark II or the Sony FX6 Mark II, and I really hope people aren't looking for a new version of the FX30. However, these firmware updates mean that a lot of the things that we might've had complaints about are getting improved, but there might not be a new camera in those configurations, at least anytime soon. That being said, as soon as I get that update, I am gonna show you guys how you could update the firmware on your camera if you don't know already, but I wanted to pop in here really quickly to talk about the fact that 
So far, we're eating good in 2024. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. At the very least, you learned something. And also, click the subscribe button. It's free, and I realize that 85% of you don't actually do that. That being said, see you guys in the next one. Peace. Uh.